Seems like my move of having 70% cash don't seem so dumb now, does it, people? Who said it was dumb? Uh, nobody said it was dumb. Okay. <laughs> you you might have been like, oh, you should be spending that money. Well, yeah. Uh, I was. Did you spend that money? I started spending it yeah, today. that's what I'm talking about. For that. Yeah. I'm glad I didn't spend it the day we talked about it. My ass would have been handed to me. Well, the day we talked about it was Sunday. Exactly. <laughs> or Monday, I should say. <laughs> um, but no, I mean, it, it's it's to the point of, um, it's just, I, I hear more and more people, and you weren't the only one, but I think people have these hard and fast rules, and the reality is, um, my strategy is different than other people's strategies. Yeah. And, um, and I was so happy, like, I am red on the day, which I'm going to get into things that are going to be red. Um, but one of those things where like, I feel like people are still trying to find this one size fits all thing. And you got to understand your strategy, how you work, your risk tolerance and all that other stuff, because I don't know many people that would have been in 70% cash. Um, and I was, I was, um, I feel like I was speaking a little bit of a different tune than some people were speaking. Yeah. Um, even yourself, I feel like you're rarely in that much cash, which I yeah, was considering yeah. getting, you know, like I could have been out even closer to 80, 90% just because I, a lot of my green positions were up 20% plus. Yeah. So I said that this morning in level three, I want to view this as the second half, the second half of the game. So we're getting into the second half. You know, my stops were halftime, have some cash to spend. And it's been a great first half of the year, year to date. But right now starts sort of the second half, which is a new game in my mind. So yeah. my hope is I can, you know, have equal performance. Again, it's always double market return. And so if I have a five to 10 percent second half of the year that's my expectation i would hope that it's better than that and i think we're gonna have a really strong second half of the year but i don't need i just want to continually have those consistent like you talk about base hits i just want to keep getting base hits i mean that's how you win you know small ball is how most most teams end up winning games anyway uh at the end of the day it's about getting the w so i i yeah i definitely i uh, think that your approach has been great um and you know, looking at, at my own portfolio, yeah, I think that, you know, obviously I was in a little bit heavier than maybe I should have been, but I still saw this coming. So it's kind of one of those things where it's like I, I knew that we were going to be in for a bumpy July. So was it do I just take money out of stuff that I'm in or do I just ride it out and see where my, my chips lay? And so then I ended up kind of taking a little bit more of the latter approach, but still had a bunch of money to put into some stuff. Um you know, I, I, you know, and that's why I ended up loading the boat on Apple. Yeah. And uh, so that seems to be working out pretty good. And I think the energy is still going to lead uh, the markets in the last half of the year. I think it's going to be energy fang. And that's why, you know, and we're going to be talking about some of the, some other fang stocks uh, later in the show. But I mean, it's just um, I think when you look at the S&P 500, why it's moving today, why is it green today? It's not because of any of the, the value stocks today. It is all big cap tech. Uh, that has been leading the uh, the charge mm -hmm. here. So I think uh, that's probably going to be the name of the game going into the second half of the year. Uh, but, you know, you have to endure a little bit of the roller coaster ride that is July right now. I think the hard part is um, thinking about how how to scale in with the cash you have. Now yeah. I'm at about 28%. I spent a good amount. I mean, I got – I added to Clover – um, which I wasn't planning on, and my philosophy behind that was really due to the fact that I felt like there was a specific reason it was moving down, and I felt it was unwarranted. So when we talk about discounted opportunities, um, I got into that. And, you know, I talked about this before on the first Clover move. Um, I'm committing to just silencing the noise, and it's harder. I think it's harder for us yeah. because we are – basically putting things we put everything out publicly we're one of the few places that you can see our portfolio that we i mean you, you literally we have to say everything we're doing yeah. we don't have to but we, we've committed to we doing choose that. to yeah and so um it's harder when people know those moves like if you're in the confines of your own home and nobody and i'm only bringing up the good shit i do not the bad you know i could buy 12 positions and i could tell you the one that's up 40 percent right it's easier when you're you know you're only you're only cherry picking those <laughs> 
um, that was hard for me the first half of the year because I was like, I, I think I could have performed better if I wasn't putting everything out on Front Street. So I got to right. do my best to not worry about perception or noise or what people say on you're crazy about this or crazy about that. Are some people going to think I'm crazy for, for adding and going back full position on Clover? Sure. Uh, yeah, I'm sure. But gonna get I've got to trust what I what I what got me here and what I've done for many, many years in that how I treat the investments and just how I valued companies in general. So that's going to be interesting to see. But Clover was obviously one drive shack. I added to car lots was part of my plan. This is my final ad. So, I thought about car lots. Yeah. So, yeah, car lots. I got in at like 484 for my final ad. Um, not sure what my average is right now, but right around probably five, a little over five dollars. Yep. Um, but then I got into a little bit less speculative. I added to Delta. Delta is one I've been really bullish on. I know I'm going to have to wait a little bit, but Delta has earnings next Wednesday, probably going to be on Stockwatch Sunday. Yes. Um, and one you put on the watch list, AMAT, um, I haven't gotten into it, Applied Metals. Is that what it is, Applied Metals? Applied Materials. Materials, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm thinking about getting out of my AMD position, which I'm up like 17%. Not anymore because it's down. <laughs> uh, but I'm up like 15 14% on it. Yeah. I'm thinking about flipping that into AMT, AMT, AMAT and then flipping that into NVIDIA after July 20th, whatever the sell-off occurs. Um, so I feel good about where I'm at in those things. And um, I think there was one or two other things I added to, but I certainly was spending today. But the reality is this could continue. Yeah. I, I hope it doesn't, but... I don't want to be at the beginning of the dip. So I have 2,700. I will actually be, um, I add 10% of my original investment. So I'd add 500 every month to that account. So I'll have that $500. So that'll be about a little over 30% cash that I'm going to sit on and let this week play out. Probably won't add to anything just yet unless I want to get into that AMAT, but that's cash I'm going to use that I'm going to flip. Yeah, Apply Materials, if you guys don't know, that that's a stock that essentially uh, engineers a lot of, um, you know, uh, materials and parts for a lot of the major chip makers, most of them. Uh, any Name a chip maker and AMAT is involved with them. So that's going to be a good one, I think. I ended up putting that on the watch list this morning. But as far as I'm concerned, um, my approach is a little bit different. I'm staying uh, true to the stuff that I have strong convictions on and not really deviating from that. Uh, I um, I may add to them a little bit. Penn National is fucking wrecking me right now. Yeah. Um, it's down to seventy dollars a share, and I think that it could very well go down to sixty six. I'm very well prepared for that, but I'm not. I'm not going to sell it at this point. There's just no point. Yeah. Um. But uh, so that's the one that's the really frustrating one. But all the other ones, I'm not. I'm I'm okay on. Um. You know, obviously the Apple trade's been doing really well. I'm on in OIH. I was not not expecting OIH to come back to retest those low two hundred dollar levels. So I'm. I viewed that as a gift, which is why I ended up rolling some money into that. So I feel really confident in that. And um, so I'm just taking the approach of sitting on my hands and just waiting out July. I think the yeah, so I'm glad you brought up July because we're in July 7th. I know a lot of you guys talk about catching the dip in the bottom or whatever. If it is going to be a choppy July, July, depending on what you think, um, what I what I try to like try to fight against is that one big red, red day and feeling like I got to get in now when yeah. that one red day can turn into six out of seven red days yeah. or whatever. <laughs> yeah. And so not again, that's the FOMO working with you and catching a dip. You still got to exercise that patience. And I have right. to remind myself as well to exercise that patience and be disciplined and be like, this ain't going to be the only red day. And even if it is, what's the, what is the worst that could happen? That means yeah. that the stuff I'm in, gets a little bit better, turns a little bit green. Right. Um, so that's the one thing I worry about and I think about for myself and I think about in the community is like we've seen this happen in the past. We might have a bit of a choppy few days, even weeks. Right. Maybe months. Who knows? But like if it's days or weeks, kind of like spending all the cash too soon. Like it's no different than a specific stock as well because I have 70%. I actually am not happy. I wish I would have had, I would have, been it maybe like 35 percent but like even scaling in and how i use that cash and not yeah. spending it all in one day i think that's even there's a level of irresponsibility in that